news well we're gonna we're gonna talk about a couple a few nerd topics <clears throat> so this i hope this this doesn't spill over too much because we have we've dunked on you know toxic bros and shit like that already in this episode but i thought that this was good uh grant morrison is a is a comic writer a british uh comic writer that i've quite enjoyed over the course of the last you know few decades um he actually uh, was part of the British invasion from the eighties. Uh, yes, believe it or not, this, yeah. And, and you know what? I'm almost certain that I'm saying pronouns wrong. I'm almost certain Grant Morrison is non-binary. So I'll say they from now on, but they mm -hmm. were, were writers of really subversive and interesting shit in the eighties. Uh, there's, a, there was a comic called the invisibles that I, I read a few years ago and it is it's it is and also they wrote doom patrol the the comic that the tv show is based on <clears throat> and you know how fucking weird doom patrol is right oh yeah uh and just and also did a a run on superman did a run on uh they uh they did uh final crisis in in the like the early 2000s there's a lot of stuff that really interesting stuff that was going on in the comics in the early you know the late 90, you know, 90s, early 2000s that they were a part of. You know, the New 52 was part of, of uh, that. So really super steeped in DC lore. Uh, made some really cool Superman stuff uh, back, in the, uh, back in the day. And so uh, they were at, talking about basically why, why this whole trend towards edginess with superheroes is it kind of sucks. Now, now, Corey. Before we get into the quote, it, I mean, is, mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like, like this, this whole? And I don't want to call <clears throat> Zack Snyder out on it totally. He's <laughs> he's part of it, but there are other people that mm -hmm. are, you know, even the boys. And I understand why the boys is a kind of a, a piss take, if you will, on superheroes. Mm -hmm. But there are other stuff like that are sort of being super edgy with these iconic superheroes. Uh, mm -hmm. Look, I, I do understand what he's saying about switching it up and just making them more of like bad guys and anti villains. But, you know, the only thing is I'm I'm just having a hard time understanding because for me, Superman is Superman. You know, that's the lore and more compass of that particular character. Um, and if you want a bad Superman, in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, well, that's why there have been characters created like Bizarro or Solomon Grundy or um, uh, Black Adam. You know, these type of characters that are like the, the adverse or the inverse of Superman because he is a different type of moral compass. So, I mean, look, for me, I don't. I can understand why you would want a bad Superman. I don't think it's a bad idea to show that there's flaws in the character, but I I don't know why you would want to do a bad Superman movie, especially when you're exposing uh, Superman to a new generation of kids. You know, because yeah. these kids don't want to turn on the TV and see Superman's an asshole. They'd be like, what, what the hell is this? You know, they'd be like, oh, Superman's a villain. You know, you don't want that. Superman is Superman and he has bad guys. So that's my only thing on it. I definitely see what he's talking about, but I don't know if you're first for this generation, you're coming out with another Superman that's straight bad. Yeah. Uh, Brightburn is a, if you do that, just, just do Brightburn. Do a yeah. movie that's called Brightburn then. Which I love that movie, but yeah. Uh, no, Me too. It, it, I, I want to actually give the quote so we can like really kind of dig into it. He says, uh, to undermine the fundamental appeal of superheroes like Superman and Supergirl by recasting them as antiheroes at best or outright monsters, dragging imaginary childhood paragons off their pedestals to reinforce a fairly facile point about the tendency of real world hero heroes to exhibit feet of clay struck me and strikes me still as imaginatively lazy. And I'm a hundred percent on that, and and, and mm -hmm. for this reason, and something you said sort of sort of triggered that to me. You know, you're presenting these these heroes to kids, and and that's that's fair. Like Saturday morning cartoons aren't going to do this, but you know who would be like, oh, it'd be cool if that happened. Fucking thirteen year old Call of Duty, 
uh, you know, mm-hmm. kids, you know, pimply face kids. Like, oh, that wouldn't mm-hmm. it be cool if if Superman, you know, he's super powerful, he would just do whatever. And that's mm-hmm. that's the level of. But the problem is, is they're not the only ones because there's a bunch of forty and fifty year old, you know, dudes, mostly guys. We'll say mostly guys. Who also think that that would be dope? They want they want the strong man that just kind of fucking does whatever he wants to do, right? Exactly. And it is some of the most brain dead fucking, you know, ideation possible. It really is people just you know glorifying the strong man, and that's the thing is you miss the damn point about mm-hmm. Superman. See, Superman's not a Greek hero. He's not he's he's not a Greek god. He's not a god who basically is just a person that does horrible things because they can. He's a guy that could be that but isn't because he's an actual he's an actual hero. He's an actual godlike hero. He's more godlike than than Zeus. Hell, he probably and Zeus. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm about to say. Yeah. Because yeah, he's a person and he makes mistakes and everything, but he's coming from a good place and not a place of like, you know, uh, jealousy or or possessiveness or greed or anything like that. He's a person that understands he's got a shit ton of power that he could lord over people with, but he'd rather just make their, their world better. And mm-hmm. when you sit there and try to undermine that core, you know, foundation... You don't make Superman. You don't make an actual Superman. You make a whatever, you know, whatever you want to call. You may call him Superman, but he's not really Superman. If you want to yeah. do the same thing with Diana, like I think one of the reasons why D, the uh, the Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman movie, works so damn well is she is so Diana. She is a hundred percent. Oh my god! Yes, a hundred percent. There's not. There's nothing edgy about her. That's not. She's not edgy. She's just a powerful person that wants to do good. And I don't understand Mm -hmm. in this world that seems to want to fucking tear itself apart. Why do we want to deify fucking Homelander? Why do we Mm -hmm. want to look at Homelander and be like, yeah, he told that he told that liberal. (laughs) Unless that's what you want from someone in the world. And and if that is the case, you're just kind of fucking. You know, you're you're kind of sociopathic. I, I, anyway, I'm with you, man. Uh, I my my favorite recent version of Superman is My Adventures with Superman. Superman. Oh, oh my God! You watched that too? Fuck yeah! I loved it. Fuck. Oh yeah. my God! So good. I, oh my God! I, it's so I, good. I like Henry Cavill as Superman, but I will watch my. I would rather he go in and recreate a live action version of My Adventures with Superman than ever do another Zack Snyder thing. Like, yes oh god it's so good so I, I i've been i'm sorry i've been going off a lot a lot on this i this is near and dear to my heart i'm i was one of those stupid little 13 year olds that thought oh he's superman so lame and then i read actual superman stories in my 20s and i was like oh shit i was a fucking idiot this guy is actually mm-hmm. awesome and i want mm-hmm. more of this and when i see this wanting to make homelander-esque Superman, it it really fucking angers me because it's a, it is yeah. it tarnishes a, 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 an iconic character and I, and I don't like it. I, I'm with you. I mean, that's what I was bringing up. Like that is what makes Superman one of the most popular and famous characters ever. Because of that, he has the ultimate power to literally take over the world if he wanted to in a snap, but he doesn't because he has the power to have that moral compass to help, to not take over, to do everything opposite of that because of how he was raised by his, you know, his family, his dad, his mom out there in Clarksville. I mean, uh, shit, I I said it wrong. (laughs) Smallville, right. <laughs> it's like Clarksville <laughs> and Smallville. That that is the being of who Superman is, and once you get to that core and that lore and that moral compass of that character, that's when it like opens up. Like, oh shit, he is really doing more by not trying to take over the world. Then, so it's I feel you, man. It's always the easy way way out to just make a bad Superman. 
And that's what people, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, I was like, man, Superman's kind of lame. But once you start reading it and you really understand, you're like, nah, man, now I see. Now I see the appeal of this character. Yeah. And I think regular, you know, non nerd audiences like the just the you know the people that just go to the you know to the movies and they just like they know who superman is supposed to be they're not stupid mm -hmm. they know and they yeah. know when they don't like what they're seeing there's a reason that yeah. that man of steel as good as it is didn't mm -hmm. hit a billion dollars and it should have it didn't hit a yeah. billion dollars because it forgot that story forgot why superman is who he is he it didn't just mm -hmm. forget that it forgot why generations of people what they knew about superman and why they liked right him. yeah and, and you know as much say what you will about you know how campy or corny or whatever the fuck the you know the og 70s you know early 80s superman are they understood clark kent they understood superman. Exactly. if you really think about it even though i may not have the effects and all that it can't the the core in the lore and the moral compass of who Clark was is identified 100 percent in Superman one and Superman two in the, in the 70s and early 80s. They got it. And that's why those films are so revered. Even today, even though they look campy, they got the character right. And a lot of it has to do with Christopher Reeve. He nailed the duality of the character playing Clark Clark and playing Superman. He, he got it right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think Grant Morrison's a hundred percent on here. I also think if if you if you are one of these people that like the edgy Superman, good on you. There are you know you can go play Injustice. You can you know you can watch Man of Steel. You can do there's all that stuff for you. And and good on you if that's if that's what you really really want. I just don't think that that's the way towards success for DC. And I and I think James Gunn knows that too. And I, one thing that really absolutely. gives me a lot of confidence for superman legacy is that it is clear that james gunn understands how mm -hmm. to actually deal with superman properly and the reason why i know that is because guardians the guardians 3 told me everything i need to know about his superman he gets it he understands what's going on he can have darkness but still the main characters are light that's okay mm -hmm. cool i'm good mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready so yeah. Uh, anyway, this is a good, this is a good little uh, conversation about Superman. It's I think we're we're on the same page. So, uh, oh yeah. But, but you know, well, we're gonna uh, definitely talk more about this this particular subject because Superman Legacy is is in the works, and we're gonna have plenty to say about it. <laughs>